Hey, good to be back with you, Hugh. I want to begin, I'm going to move to your Fox News article in just a second, but you know Andrew Cuomo from the Governor's Association. Should he resign? Well, listen, I, you know, I, I've been unlike a lot of other blue state governors that have criticized many of us across the country. I have refrained from doing that. Everybody's having to make tough choices. But I can tell you this, that uh, last year when he was down here, you know, pushing on mass mandates and other things in regards to the pandemic, we were implementing a sexual harassment policy that was one of the first things I did when I got into office. So I'll just let my record speak for itself, and his will speak for his. Does his conduct, as you know it, comport with your sexual harassment policy in Georgia? Well, I wouldn't really be able to speak to that. We've got kind of an independent commission that does that, which is the way it should be, where all employees work, whether it's in the governor's office or any state agency, you can go to the office of the inspector general. We kind of did this in conjunction with the uh, Office of Administrative Services, and it, it was one of the first acts I did when I took office. And it's worked very well, um, you know, and that's the way it should be. I mean, people should be able to be in a workplace environment, be able to do the job, and, and not be harassed as part of it. That's very Politics. interesting. I didn't know that, Governor. So if someone were to make an allegation against you, you wouldn't appoint an investigator as Andrew Cuomo did. It would go to a standing body of independent people? Well, I mean, I, could, I certainly could call for something like that, but there's a process in state government where any employee, if they are getting harassed, there's a, you know, a framework for how they can report that investigation, and it would go uh, to the Office of Investigations. All right, so you're, the OI, you're... The OIG, in other words. You're going to take a pass on predicting and whether or not he should resign or assessing that? Yeah, I mean, look, I wouldn't want to weigh in on that. I don't really know too many details other than just what I've read in these reports. And, you know, that can be dangerous sometimes, especially when you're dealing with the national media. So I wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to comment not knowing more than I do. All right, now, Governor Brian Kemp, you have an op-ed today. COVID relief, Pelosi-Schumer plan favors Democrat states. Here's how we fight back. First of all, are Georgia's senators supporting this plan? Because they're both Democrats. Uh, we lost both of the runoffs, and that was unfortunate. So you got two Democratic senators. Have you talked to them about this plan? Well, I haven't talked to them personally. We've been in contact, uh, contact certainly with their offices to let them know the disparity here and how this is, you know, adversely hurting Georgia. New York is, you know, per capita going to get 50% more dollars than our own Georgia citizens would. So there's a lot of inequity in this bill is favoring states like California and New York. I mean, can you imagine, Hugh, if President Trump, when he was doing these COVID relief packages or the Republicans when they were in charge, were, you know, letting Georgia or Florida or Texas, you know, have more per capita money than California, New York, and Illinois. I mean, the, the media and the Democratic politicians would have absolutely been going crazy and all we want to be is treated as fair i mean our economy is in great shape most of the governors that signed that letter in the same boat as we had you know we did two things we we protected lives and continue to do that against covid but also we understand how important it is to protect livelihoods and that we can't let you know a virus or a pandemic or anything else lead us to economic ruin i mean the, the health effects of that from a mental standpoint and others you know childhood, early childhood learning and, and you know, K-12 through learning. I mean, it, it has been really hard on our students. It's been hard on our small business owners. It's adversely affecting minority-owned businesses worse than anybody. And it, it's uh, unreal that the Democrats would play favorites on a relief package like this. If anything, it ought to be targeted more at those who are who are out of work or still displaced because of the, the adverse effects that some industries have had to the pandemic, like airline industry, convention, hospitality, and so on. Now, Governor, I, I can't figure out what's in it because there is in the Wall Street Journal today a reference to a bailout for multi-employer pension plans. Well, the biggest multi-employer pension plan that I know of is CalPERS. It's radically underfunded. It's a disaster waiting to happen on the West Coast. Do you have any idea what that refers to? Because if that's a second bucket of money for Chicago and Connecticut and California, blue states and cities that have simply not funded their pension plans, I'll, there's another reason not to vote for it. 
Well, look, this, this is exactly what they wanted. I mean, this is what they, they need the federal bailout. They, they just are not in a position to fix decades long problems here on their own. And that's what's so disappointing. This doesn't have anything to do with helping folks that have been adversely affected from COVID. This is going back and fixing financial problems that states have had because they hadn't made tough choices for over a decade. And this is a blue state bailout, which is, I think, why it's designed like it is. It's, it's unreal that, you know, Georgia senators would support this. I fully expect them to do that. I'm hoping that you have, you know, senators in states that are, you know, Democrats that are, uh, you know, in states like West Virginia, Joe Manchin, or perhaps Montana and others are going to stand up and say, look, I just cannot vote for this disparity. We need to do something that's going to be fair to all Americans. And certainly, from my standpoint, it should be fair to all Georgians. I mean, look, we could use, I, I don't think we need to bail out as big as we, it is. I, I'm certainly supportive of targeted things to help those that are still having a hard time uh, when many others are, are not. But if, if they're going to do this, they should do it equitably because we could use that money to help, you know, put more money into broadband access in rural Georgia to help, you know, continue to, to do great things in our schools and, you know, our health care system and other things that that, you know, would benefit Georgians and not, you know, more benefit people in New York and California and Illinois in these bailout states. So, Governor Kemp, the key question is, will Raphael Warnick listen to you? John Ossoff won't. He's got six years, but Raphael Warnick has to run yeah. in 2022. Have you tried to call him? Well, we've talked to their officers. I, I don't think they're going to support it. I mean, maybe they'll have a change of heart if some of their fellow Democrats stand up. I think they owe so much to you know, the, the humor and, and the crowd up there, I just don't see it. But if enough Georgians will get on them and, and uh, let them know this is going to be a bad vote, I mean, they're going to be putting New Yorkers and Californians in front of Georgians. I couldn't imagine doing that if I was serving in the United States Senate or the United States Congress. But we, you know, we've stated the plan very clear. We told them we were going to message on this point uh, because Georgians need to know. I mean, they need to know that we're be, being treated unfairly as our, you know, uh, 20-something other uh, states around the country. I think it's really more than that, but there are 21, 22 governors that have signed on, and one Democrat did. So, Governor, uh, though, have you talked to Raphael Warnick since the special that put him into the Senate? No, I haven't. We have a, uh, my chief of staff has been talking to his folks. I have talked to Senator off a time or two, um, and we've had, you know, good communication with their office, and we'll continue to do that with all our policymakers in D.C., despite what side of the aisle they're on. Okay, but, you know, if you're going to, if, if if we want our audience in Georgia to call Pastor Warnick, Senator Warnick, to vote against this, you have to call him, too. Do you, are you going to make an effort to call him up and say, look, Pastor, this doesn't fly. Let me explain. This yeah. is like. Well, look, he, he's, he's well aware of that, I can assure you. And uh, we have gotten communication from their office on, on where they stand. So I don't think my phone call is going to make any difference. The best thing I could do is continue to put this information out into the public and, and let the voters work on them a little bit. That's how it's supposed to work, and that's what we're doing right now in the middle of our uh, legislative session. Now, uh, Governor, in the legislative session, uh, will there be any kind of electoral bill, reform bill, any kind of voting process bill in the new Georgia legislature? Oh, there's tons of things floating around right now. I think we probably have over 100 bills that uh, House members and Senate members have introduced. I'm certainly very supportive of putting the photo ID requirement on absentee ballots by mail and, and other things, making sure that there's a fair process and that that process can be observed and that those observers are close enough to the process to actually see it. I've heard a lot of the complaints from people, and I know why folks are frustrated. I've, I've always had the stance that we need to make it easy to vote and hard to cheat and have secure accessible fair elections in Georgia, and that's what we're working on. There's a lot of proposals out there right now. The House passed one yesterday. I think the Senate may be debating one today. So we still got a little ways to go through the process, but that's definitely moving here. And, and will you sign anyone that comes to your desk? Well, I think it depends on what it is and, and what's in it. I mean, there are so many proposals that some of them compete against each other. So I wouldn't say that I would sign every single one of them, but I'm very supportive. We've had great conversations with the Speaker of the House, the Lieutenant Governor, uh, the legislative leadership, and individual members about really some good ideas. 
to further secure the vote. I mean, I don't know who could be against that. All right, last co- last question, Governor. Is Herschel Walker going to run for the Warnick seat? You know, I don't know. I keep hearing that rumor. I mean, obviously, Herschel's a great Georgian. Uh, I think one of the problems is I believe he lives in Texas right now. And certainly, I guess he could move back. I don't. I haven't talked to him. I'm not sure what his intentions are. Uh, but I think there's a lot of really good people looking at that seat. we got to win that back. You know, it is, it is awful for Democrats to have complete control in, in the United States Congress, the U.S. Senate, and the presidency. Um, and, and we just got to continue to fight for, for good policies and hold the line and win the Senate back and hopefully take over the House. I think hey. Republicans have a great opportunity to do that. Governor Kemp, I want to push in one more. Redistricting is looming. I don't know how you do it in Georgia. Is it done by the legislature in Georgia, or do you have an independent commission? Yeah, you know, the legislature does it in Georgia, which that was one thing that really was missed on the November 3rd election. We had a great election in Georgia with our members of the legislature. Continue to hold strong majorities in the Senate and the House. Obviously, the governor's office, so we're going to be in charge of redistricting. And, you know, we'll probably, we probably won't be able to get to that process till. Uh, late fall um, or right at the end of the year because of the delay in the census. But that's something that we'll be tackling here pretty soon. Are you picking up a seat or two in the House? I don't think we'll – well, I, uh, I don't think we're going to lose any. We, it's possible we could pick up one. I'm not really sure about that. It's going to be very close, but I don't think we're going to lose any. Um, you know, so we're, we're going to hold our own here in Georgia for sure. Well, Governor Kemp, thank you for joining me. I pushed out the Fox News op-ed. I hope you are successful in persuading Raphael Warnock not to support this because it's a nightmare bill, and it really is a blue state well, bailout. Yeah, and the good thing is if he does support it, it's going to be a bad vote that he'll have to answer to the voters for here very shortly. Thank you, Governor. Brian Kemp of Georgia.